Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important day for this truck for two reasons, but the first reason right now is the fact that we are at Lenny's Hub Dyno, and we're about to get this thing super dialed in with the tunes. I'm excited, Lenny, are you excited? Super excited. So this gives us an opportunity to work with the calibrated power, let them work with a set of our 120 horse injectors, uh, just show them kind of the tricks that we've learned on, on tuning some of our stuff. Uh, we've got the opacity meter set up. We've got all five gases being monitored. You've got exhaust gas temperature and all that stuff. So we've got data for days. Data that nobody really in the uh, diesel pickup truck industry has ever used before. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, truck's been sitting in the hub dyno all night long. We got it set up for you yesterday. So it's basically 65 degrees in there. It's much colder than that outside today. You're, you're very durable, but you got layers of shirts on. But uh, the data that we've got and how easy this is gonna be to tune using all that data, uh, you saw it, started up cold. You've got no grid heater. And uh, it's still, I had the opacity meter running and you get the quick little whiff. And uh, now we're recording, it's in there. Basically we've got the thing in gear right now so we can warm up the rear differential, transfer case, transmission, and it's just sitting there at idle right now, kind of uh, getting some fluids mixing. So when we, part, when we start you know, throwing the real boots to it, we're not just gonna break the thing or kill a tranny or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and this dyno's real. Like we're only gonna allow this thing to increase 200 RPM per second no matter how much power it has, and the hub dynos will, will contain 5,500 foot pe uh, pound feet, foot pound of torque. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, it's gonna be a real test. Like each one of these hits is gonna be 10, 11, 12 seconds long. So it's not just a quick inertia hit. We're gonna, we're gonna actually like heat soak and measure everything. It's just, I love this stuff. It's That's so awesome. Fun. I'm super stoked because this is actually my first live tuning dyno session, period. Also, being able to use the hub dyno and be able to get all that data. You know me and I know you, I'm a, I freaking love data. The more I can get, the better, especially having to do tech support issues over the phone, via email. You give me a bigger picture, I can give you a narrower answer. Absolutely. And this is gonna be really cool. So, I'm excited, we're gonna get to it.
Today was a very fantastic day. Yes, it was. For a lot of reasons. Um, what you just saw in the video, uh, obviously dyno pulls on a video don't quite convey what actually happens, especially during a session like this. It's like when you're hiking or snowmobiling or, or out four wheeling and you're trying to film like how steep the hill is to be like, I gotta scare everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it and it looks flat. Yeah. Dyno pulls are a lot like that. So we totally understand that watching the dyno pulls, you may think to yourself, okay, great. <laughs> If you didn't look, there's a couple of things I want you to make sure that you're looking at, is mainly the tailpipe. There's the horsepower number, but the tailpipe is the part that is probably gonna shake you a little bit. And if you understand tuning, Lenny's gonna spew some numbers here that uh, are really gonna make you rethink your basic, everything you knew about tuning. What we've been doing. Yeah. So it was really cool today to work with, have the opportunity, because you guys sell calibrated power solutions. Mm -hmm. you, you choose them because you sell them, and for me to have the opportunity to, uh, to be forced to work with them on a project, on camera, on the dyno, sending them data back and forth today was awesome because now they're not going to struggle with like tuning our stuff anymore, which mm -hmm. is a fantastic win for everybody. Um, the fact that this truck has BD's turbos uh, sized properly. It's got an aftermarket catalytic converter on it, which is really cool. I love that. Yeah, five inch high flow carb legal converter. Carb. carb. I love that. Uh, we did do opacity readings throughout the day uh, in the states that still use an opacity meter for uh, like finding that legal smoke limit. 30 is the maximum limit to be uh, within like legal limits. Mm -hmm. And we were 15, 17, 18, 20, like all day long during all the pulls. This thing is like way lower than stock needs to be. Mm -hmm. So we're now making 700 and change, 710 or something. Yep. Call it a 700 horse truck. Uh, we've got uh, video of the edge monitor with pyrometer and what we make at 700 horse? 1,050 degrees. And the reason why <laughs> is because when the piston goes up and the piston's going back down, there's virtually zero dwell time. 
So with a small, small injector, you have to give it a lot of injector on time or duration. And uh, the longer the injector is on, the further the piston goes down the hole and the closer to the exhaust valve popping and opening is. So as you're shoving fuel and chasing that piston down the hole, you're losing cylinder pressure, losing compression, and you're not gonna use that fuel to motivate the truck going down the road. My intention, our idea, is basically to get the, the nozzle to work correctly. We've redesigned the nozzles, we've changed hole counts and all sorts of things to optimize the fuel area in the piston bowl. We've come up with things that work really, really good, so we're able to use all the oxygen in the bowl and based on what size your turbo is. So say like a, a factory turbo is gonna run out of air at 3,200, 3,500 RPM. I recommend somebody goes to like say 1,800, maybe 2,000 microseconds of injector on time. S3, you're gonna go to maybe 35, 3,700 RPM before it runs out of air. And you're gonna wanna be lower in microseconds because piston speed goes up and your dwell time goes down. So you've gotta get the injection event in there faster. You've got an S4 and an S6. Uh, excuse me, T6 on the on the big charger and a T4. Mm -hmm. This thing's got air for 45, 47 RPM. I'd really like to see that sub with any tuning, sub 1,500 microseconds to manage exhaust gas temperature. We've got this truck perfectly dialed in at 1,060 microseconds. We're not exceeding factory timing, but we've carried the factory timing out a little bit to optimize the extra RPM that these turbos are good for. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because our injector on time, you know, this truck stock would have made 1,860 microseconds-ish, 1,850, 1,860. Mm -hmm. We're down to 1,060. Injector on time is just like we're on, we're off, and all of the fuel burns in the hole before the exhaust valve pops, and you've still got lots of compression. It's pretty simple when you think about it. It is, and you'd think that this would have been a standard in the industry, but it's not. So, you're yeah. the one doing the work. Well, it couldn't have been a standard in the industry until we had blank nozzles. Mm -hmm. Now that we've got blanks, we're not, looking, we're not looking at a factory part and then trying to modify it. We're able to start with our own canvas and paint whatever picture we want. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got EDM wire every tenth of a thousandth of an inch. So when we, when we pop a hole through there, it might be, we might use 7.7 thousandths and then AFM it or abrasive flow machine it to get the proper K factor in there. Mm -hmm. If it's too big, then we back it down one or two tenths of a thousandth of an inch and then we add a little bit more K-factor. So trying to get the atomization is, it's a science that this room, having Mitch, having Matt, my guys at the shop, we're all working very, very hard to try and make a product that's just superior to everything else that anybody's out. And it's not that, I mean, yes, we've got a lot more tools. Yes, we've got people working on it, but having all of it, EDM, AFM, extrude home, good calibration equipment, an awesome dyno. We've got all five gas tests, plus we've got opacity. It just takes a lot of effort to collect all that data and use all that data. So projects like yours can come in first thing in the morning. I can talk to a guy that I've never spoke to on the phone and be like, here, just try this. I know the injector and we're within our, you wanted 700 horsepower. That mm -hmm. was the goal. Yeah. And our first hit was, uh, what was it? Six, 680. We were hovering around the 685 for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, non-stressed 685 and granted we're still not stressed either but like it's basically no extra effort 685 yeah that was just me throwing a slow pitch going here throw this in it and uh, let's see what happens mm -hmm. and in the end the biggest thing that helped us today was at 2700 rpm calibrated was able to give us a little bit more timing uh to where the factory was like 15 degrees and then it pulled it down to eight degrees and I believe that Mike at Calibrated just added that to like 12. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got enough timing now to get all of it in there at that really high RPM. And we're still, we're at 12 degrees. We're, it's yeah. not like we're going to try and kick the head off of this thing. No. Uh, things have happened a lot in the last two or three years that just they're going to make 700 horsepower trucks like very reliable and very durable. Mm -hmm. And the, we wanted 700 horsepower as clean as possible. I didn't think we were going to get 700 horsepower clean. Everybody, the expectation was as clean as possible. Everybody had an acceptable <laughs> amount. Again, go back, wash the tailpipe, it's clean. Yeah. There's nothing there. And I think that's what speaks volumes about this, and especially you guys and your team, everybody calibrated, us here at Diesel Power Products, it's a win, win, win. Like everybody's just, those who know, everybody's mind is blown right now. 
and it's really really cool to be a part of it and actually like just be here doing it. it it's cool to show people because our media platform only reaches so many people your media platform reaches a different people it's it's more people it's less people it's different people doing this video and showing you guys how it's supposed to be done in my mind and then getting a chance to work with the guys that calibrated so they don't have to struggle with like tuning our injectors like their initial they were getting ready to tune like other brands of injectors and the, the calibration file was just way mm -hmm. they were they were more than double the microseconds that i wanted and i'm like no 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 like please just try this like even if i'm wrong just try it yeah because i knew the product i knew what the injector was capable of doing and that's going to help them in the future so when calibrated power solutions you guys sell a set of our injectors and calibrated is going to tune it when they go to tune it they're going to tune it like a dynamite injector not like just a 60 percent or 100 percent or 200 percent injector because mm -hmm. they're not all created equal no and if any of this information really resonates with you and you want to learn more about it we have a long form video where we went from start to finish with a nozzle we do yes yes we do yes we'll have that in the link you can check that out as well and lenny is also going to be doing an in-depth very tech related video as far as the dyno goes as well so we want to get you guys and dynamite everybody's going to get really good information on this hopefully we can do a podcast with the guys at calibrated mm -hmm. um our guys matt will definitely be shooting a video about uh kind of what we've done here because we've already gotten like instagram requests for people wanting to know more about what are what all these numbers mean and what are we looking mm -hmm. at so yeah we're going to shoot uh the the the, the long-term video or the uh the long duration video that'll be posted on other uh, social media aspects as well probably 20, 30, 40 minutes long on that one. Yeah, we know that your guys' attention span is usually like 10 to 15 minutes. So if you do want a long form video that actually gives you all of the information, you want to nerd out a little bit, those are the videos you're going to want to watch. Yes. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. you. This is super awesome. As a diesel enthusiast, like... like you feel buzzed? Yeah, I'm genuinely excited right now. Is like This is not for the cameras. This, today has been freaking ecstatic, like just electric. We actually got kind of lucky because what did I tell you? Every day leading up today, I told you that this would be a three day event. Yeah. And that's because I've never really worked with Calibrated. Um, I didn't know how on top of it they were gonna be with sending files out. Mm -hmm. And they were very good about like getting us revisions very mm -hmm. quickly. That helps a lot. Uh, and you know, ultimately like day, making the number, you're only testing one throttle position. That's 100%. Mm -hmm. But getting the drivability stuff dialed in Tomorrow I'll work with them on that, and I assume that I'm going to have anywhere from two to four hours on the drivability aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And this thing ultimately is going to drive like a stock truck that basically has a, a DPF in it. Because I really, today, you know, we were getting like 17s and 18s for opacity. Mm -hmm. You add 30 to 40 mile an hour wind speed, you're never going to see that. Mm. It, it won't be seen. Like even in the camera, you can barely see it for a split second. But yeah, when we're traveling down the road, this thing's going to be smoke free. It's fantastic. So thanks for watching this video. There's going to be a lot more information coming out, and make sure you check them out.